Wow. I feel like this is gonna go really well or terribly. Well, but I'm pretty we're excited gonna see. To see. We're gonna see. Well, hi everybody. Hey. Welcome to church. My name is Karen. My name is Daniel. And we are so glad that you're here. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, we, we're glad you're here. We're we, so glad. Yeah, you could have chosen anything else. Absolutely this is anything true. else. You could be watching Netflix and don't watch Netflix. Stay here because we're going to have an incredible service. But we are just very thankful that you popped on. And we love it if you said hello in the chat. We love our online chat. This is where you meet new people. This is where you make connections. We can share um, prayer requests and praise reports and amazing things like that. So feel free to get typing. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah, and we aren't saying don't watch Netflix. We're saying don't watch Netflix during right the now. service. Yes, right now. Right now. This hey, if this is your first time here, we're ecstatic that you're here. Yeah, you know, super we are just so honored that you chose to choose our stream um, right here at 11 a.m. Yes. You know, like, there's a lot of great churches out there, and we're just so blessed to be able to host you today. Yeah. Uh, if you go to hcfcornwall.ca uh, forward slash uh, connect we have a special gift that's ready just for you uh, so make sure to check that out and if there's some kids watching we just want to say hi and we love you kids you are amazing um, we really wish we could hang out with you in person but until we have an in-person service and an in-person program there's actually an online program just for you and you can reach it at hcfcornwall.ca slash kids there's a couple of videos that are just for different age categories and activities sheets as well so feel free to get that maybe after worship just jump on that with your parents and have a good time yeah and these aren't like super lame you know it's like true. they're not they're super lame it's not good. like you're going in school and you're having to like you know Sit just down and do watch this little yeah, yeah it's it's like it's really engaging and like i was watching it myself and like this is good stuff <laughs> like this is like Netflix quality stuff like right. this is really yeah. entertaining so you're gonna enjoy it your parents are gonna enjoy yeah. it and at any point this morning if you are struggling with something mm. or you just want to reach out you want someone to pray for you we actually have a ministry team who prays for people and we love praying for people so you can either put in the comments or if you're a bit shy about putting in the comments um, you can email us at prayer at hcfcornwall.ca or you can direct message any of our social media platforms and we will get back to you and we'll be praying for you because you're not alone no matter how you're feeling um, we're here to be with you and to pray for you speaking of prayer should we pray for the service yeah do you want to yeah. pray for the service i can do that i think i can do that oh you can absolutely yeah, I can definitely do that <laughs> lord jesus i just want to thank you god today for uh each and every single person here god that's going to be either watching this online stream live with us we're going to watch it later jesus i just pray god that you be with us god i just pray that your presence is just going to um, just comfort us, God. Holy Spirit, I just pray you comfort us yeah. today with whatever we might be going into uh, in, in life, God. I just pray, Jesus, that you're going to be with us, God. And I just pray, God, your your, your presence is just going to uh, just fill the room, every single room, Jesus. Uh, I just pray, God, that you're just going to work on hearts, God, that you're going to just... Uh, just work deeply, Jesus, in our lives as we're going through this series, Father, um, the churches that heal. God, I pray a deep healing would continue yeah. to happen, God. You've already started healing, God, and we're believing that you're going to uh, continue in bringing that into fruition, Jesus. So i just so thankful, God, for you today, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Miracle worker, promise keeper. 
darkness, my God, that is who you are.
that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me, who the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed, I'm a child.
what a great time in worship. Pastor Roy's coming with an amazing word this morning. But just before he comes, let's just watch this small clip. Hey Harvest, after over a year of lockdowns and limited events, I am so excited to announce that whether this lockdown continues or not, Serve Day 2021 will be taking place on Saturday, May 29th from 9 a.m. until noon. In the search to find a practical hands-on way that Harvest can serve our community, I came across an initiative from the city of Cornwall called Adopt a Street. This initiative invites residents and organizations to partner with the city of Cornwall to beautify its streets, parks, and walkways. This is an incredible opportunity for us as a church family to flood the streets of the most in need areas of the Renaissance District of our downtown core and serve the city right now in the middle of this pandemic. This will be a quick three hour block of time that we can get outside and make a real difference in our community. By cleaning up the most in need areas, we will be helping to build civic pride in our city and a more beautiful community for all of us to enjoy. Volunteers will be grouped by family, group, or individual, and each team will be provided with a cleanup package, which will provide everything needed for the cleanup, as well as a Harvest Serve Day t-shirt to identify us all as volunteers. Each team will also be given a specific list of streets, parkways, and walkways that they are to clean up so that we can cover as much ground as possible. We will also need some volunteers with trucks and trailers to bring our final collection of garbage and recycling bags to the Cornwall dump at the end of our event so that we can have as many maps, shirts, and cleanup packages ready for everyone who wants to join us. We will need you to register at hcfcornwall.ca slash serve day by Saturday, May 22nd. Let me be clear, this is an event that is going to be a blast and it is for your entire family. So sign up today. Is this your first time at church? Or maybe it's your hundredth time at church, but your first time at harvest. If you're new to Harvest, step one is for you. This event is designed to help you learn more about our church's history, what we believe, and how you can get involved. During lockdown, we are offering an online version of this program, and we can't wait to get you started. Simply go to hcfcornwall.ca slash step one and begin your journey at Harvest. We believe today's message is going to bless you beyond the next 30 minutes. We encourage you to take notes so that what you hear today doesn't just become knowledge in your head, but becomes transformation in your heart. To download today's notes, simply go to hcfcornwall.ca slash notes. Enjoy! Good morning, Harvest! Good morning. It's <laughs> awesome. I loved this morning's worship set. And... Um, I'm a child of God. In my Father's house, there's yeah. a place for me. Come on. And I think in this time of COVID and wondering where your place is, there's a place for you here, not only in Harvest, but in the Father's house and in his arms yeah. and his love. I just want to give a shout out this morning uh, to Kelly. Kelly, I'm so excited. Yeah, uh, I know Kelly personally. Yeah. yeah. And she's just started attending Harvest Online. And, and you know what? There's a place for you here, Kelly. We yeah. love you. We're excited that you're here with us. And um, this is a great day. I can't wait. I mean, it's great to see the names of yeah. people on screen. We're looking down at a screen of uh, your chats right now, at least that's on right. Facebook. We don't see the YouTube stream. Uh, but that's not, we're not excluding you, YouTubers. No, no. <laughs> but it's just so good. I can't wait till everybody's in the room. Yeah. Uh, and uh, next week, we go to our 9.15, even though, you know, uh, we're shut down. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more. They're continuing the shutdown until we're all safe and vaccinated. That's right. Uh, we do. It's summertime. And 11 o'clock. It seems late, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. We so want to get out and enjoy the sunshine. And to coincide with the 9.15 when we're back in the room really soon, uh, we're going to go to our 9.15 stream. So make sure everybody... Uh, yeah, we don't want you to get spoiled. Stay in coming at 11, right. and then thinking, ah, I can go at 11. Listen, you're going to get back to normal. Someday we're going to get back oh, to we, normal. Oh, we are. In fact, I'm going to be starting a, yeah. new, a new series next week called Expansion. There must be more. And we're going to be talking about getting back 
to normal because we're going right. to get back to normal. Yeah. Uh, we also are going to post, uh, we have a, a Zoom huddle in the mornings of all of the people working, the dream team. Yeah, Mia knocked it out of the park this oh, morning. Oh, my goodness. Mia prophesied. Mia had a prophetic yeah. word. She exhorted us. And that's what the Bible yeah. talks about prophecy is. It's exhorting, encouraging, yeah. uh, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And she had the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego exactly. in the fire. And not being bound well in the fire, but not coming out until they were called out. Yeah. And, 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 and she said, it was important that we don't take into That's tomorrow right. what should be burned off today. That's right. And uh, so we're going to make that available because that was a great word. And I think it'll fit perfectly with the yeah. new series. You've Way had to a great go, Mia. Week? You've had a great week? I've had a good week, yeah. Sunshine, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, week and a great weekend. And yeah. uh, we just can't wait to embrace all of you for real. Uh, we're doing the best we yeah. can uh, here when we come live. And uh, Yeah, and I think weeks are tough. I absolutely think there are tough weeks. You know, we're not made to live life alone. And I'm getting tired of living life alone. <laughs> I'm grateful I get to go to work and I get to be around people, but... We want our, our tribe back. We want our people back in the room. And yeah, for it's sure. so close, yeah. and we're going to be back We're going to be back. Definitely going to do yeah, it. Yeah, we are, definitely. All right. Well, I'm going to jump into this. Okay. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. And you're going to come back to pray, right? Because yeah. people have prayer requests, and we end every, every service that way. And so if you have we some do. prayer requests, even text them in. You're watching the stream today, and we'll pick those up, and we'll pray awesome. for every need. I actually felt during worship... Uh, that there's somebody watching today with an arthritic condition. Um, I felt specifically in the hands and knees, and maybe it's somebody with both. But uh, just claim your healing today. And the way you do that is just understand that healing is a gift. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. But you can receive it. And God has a healing gift for somebody today that's online. And I sure would like to know if that's you today, and you just kind of reach out by the end of the service as you just kind of Try what you couldn't do before, and if you feel relief, if it's not 100% relief, that's okay. So oftentimes, healing is progressive. Uh, let's celebrate whatever level of healing you receive uh, today. As I mentioned, I'm really excited about a series that I'm starting next week called Expansion, There Is More. And uh, human nature is to kind of, it's just kind of acclimatized to where we're at and what we're doing. And I believe God wants us to get us ready individually and as families and as a church family for what's next post-pandemic for us as a church and your family. And so I'm excited to share that with you. I've been working on that. This week, though, we're going to finish uh, our series, uh, Churches That Heal. This is part six. This is kind of a, a now what? What's next? Now what, as far as being a church that heals and receiving uh, what we've been looking at over these uh, now six week, and uh, we're going to jump into that. Let me pray. Father, I just ask right now uh, for those that are just feeling under it right now, that they would get up on top of it through the power of God's grace that's available for each and every one. And Lord, as we discuss today how to take a little further and a little farther, Lord, uh, what. Uh, you're speaking to us in these days. Give us grace to do that now. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's kind of an idea, uh, it's a Western thought about how we are made as human beings, that we're kind of compartmentalized. We often do this. We know we have this body compartment. We have a mind, will, and an emotion, our soul compartment, and we have a spirit compartment. And uh, oftentimes we make the mistake of compartmentalizing. The Bible says that we're made in the image of God. And God is a trinity. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You can't divide the trinity. They are three, but they're one, they're one, and they're three. And so it's kind of a mystery. And the Bible says that if we could figure it out, then we would be God. So we can't figure out God, but the Scriptures are clear that He's one and three. We call it the Trinity. Well, in the same way, God has made us one in three. We are one whole being, but our being is expressed in body and soul and spirit. But the problem is when we try to divide those compartments up and treat them a little bit differently. And Christians often buy into this mistakenly. And as we get saved, we're made aware that we were dead in our spirit, but now we're born again. And it's our spirit that's alive. It's our spirit that communes with God. And so what we tend to do is focus now on we're spiritual, 
We are partaking in spiritual things. The Bible says spiritual things didn't even make sense to us before we were born again because we didn't have a spirit to connect with God. But I think we make the mistake of we kind of think, okay, so this new part of me, this spirit part of me is alive, and it wasn't before. It must be the most important part of me because because that's the God part, and God's most important. Therefore, the most important part of me is the spiritual part of me. And although it is important, it's not most important because that, that thinking compartmentalizes us, and then we ignore our emotions, the importance of our emotions, and why God made them. He made us body, soul, and spirit. And Thessalonians tells us that he's healing us body, soul, and spirit. So God relates to all of us. He relates to all of us. And what I want to do this morning is just kind of the why of churches that heal for us individually and kind of the why uh, uh, um, for us as a church and then give you some things to think about as we move forward because this is not a one, not a one and done. Jesus came to heal our brokenness, all our brokenness, our body, soul, and spirit brokenness. That's why we believe in healing. At harvest, we believe our broken bodies are healed by what Jesus did on the cross. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher of our healing, of our brokenness. And I want you to understand that our brokenness is due to sin. Our brokenness is due to sin. But what we're not going to do is emphasize just the sins that I've committed. We're kind of aware. We recognize that we have sin. The Bible says that we have sin. We've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But there's also brokenness of sin, sin committed against me. People have sinned against you. They've sinned against me. And then I live in this broken world because sin entered the world. The world doesn't work the way it should. And there's the, also the sin of the broken world. And so we don't emphasize the brokenness just in terms of the sins I've committed, but also understanding sins committed against me and I live in this world. Now, there's a prescription for the solution for each one of those. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, there is um, the, I can change my mind about God and change my mind about the things I'm doing. It's called repentance. And I ask the Lord to forgive me, and he forgives my sin, and my broken relationship with God is restored when I got born again. When I have been sinned against, there's a prescription for that because of what Jesus did. And that is, I can forgive. I can offer forgiveness, and I can receive healing. And then I live in this broken world, and we've learned in the series, I can't change the fact that I live in a broken world, but I can accept that the world is broken and doesn't work the way it should, and I have my expectations now different. I'm not expecting perfection from others or perfection, perfection in myself, but I've learned to keep the good and process out the bad. John 16, 33, Jesus said, I've told you this, that you might have peace. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. This earth, this world doesn't work the way it should, but take heart because I've overcome the world. And so I've learned to live, I'm going to learn to live in this broken world, but I'm going to learn to live in it with the victory and understanding that God in me, there's a power of grace that counteracts this broken world. Now, the reason I kind of recap that for you, is that this is how we grow. We've learned that over these six weeks. This is how we grow. Our entire person, body, soul, and spirit. This is how we grow. And I emphasize that because sometimes in church, the emphasis is that our problem is our personal sin. If there's something wrong with you, then there's something wrong and you have some unconfessed sin, or you have some area of your life, so just stop sinning. Or worse than that, you're told that you don't have enough faith in your life, and if you would just have more and do more, you would start growing. But I emphasize that this morning because as we're recapping, we've learned, no, the answer is not in focusing on, because there isn't just my sin. There's sin against me and the sin of this world. So that's, that's not the answer to us growing. Sometimes um, what's emphasized, other times in church what's emphasized is that um, if you just have more Bible knowledge, 
You just get, learn the Bible. Get the Word of God in you. And Wow, come on. At Harvest, we believe in God's Word. We believe in the power of God's Word. But let me show you something from Scripture, because you'll hear this. People will say, you just need God's Word, because the truth will set you free. We're talking about growing. We're talking about really this word called discipleship. What does it mean to be a Christ follower and grow? Because what we learned in the first week is we are aware of the gap in our lives, the gap of how it should be and the gap of how it is, and how do we live growing in that gap. And we know we need to grow, and we know that it stopped the judgment so that I can grow. So where's the emphasis? What should we be emphasizing? Jesus turned to the Jews who claimed to believe in him. It's interesting. I love how the message says this. He he, he turned to people who felt like they knew the Bible. It would have been the Old Testament in this scripture. They didn't have the New Testament. They had the Old Testament uh, um, uh, as we have it. Our Old Testament in the Bible, that's what they would have had, scrolls of the Old Testament. And he turned to those who claimed. So he's questioning questioning their experience of, do you really know Jesus? Because he's standing right there, and they're kind of missing the point. And he says this to them, if you stick with this, stick with what? Just having Bible knowledge? No. Living out what I tell you, you will be my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourself the truth, and the truth will set you free. Are we talking about Bible knowledge? No, Jesus was correcting that. They had Bible knowledge. They claimed to understand and know, and he said, but you haven't met me. In another scripture, Jesus said, I am the truth and the way. So Jesus is, in person, the truth. John said that the Word became flesh, and so if we're just reading words on a page, we haven't experienced Jesus, and at Harvest, we want everybody to know God and know Him more every day, not just know the Scriptures. And so if we're just emphasizing, get more Bible knowledge, attend another Bible study, just get the Bible in you, will that cause you to grow? No, it won't. It won't unless it's tied to understanding and learning to find Jesus the healer of our brokenness and restoring our relationship that was broken because of our sin and then learning to restore our relationship with others because we've had broken relationships with others and learning to restore our relationship with ourself, and then to learn how to function in a broken world as those that are being healed. That is a biblical, whole, balanced approach to growing and being a disciple. And as we've learned that over these weeks, as we learn how to, how to restore that brokenness with Christ, restore our brokenness with each other, and restore our brokenness with ourselves, I want to talk now this morning about how do we take this? What's next? How do we take this further? Because the reason we did Churches at Heal was just to begin to give you the grid of these four growth areas so we can all be conscious of growing because the Bible never teaches a deprivation model. We're not just supposed to grind it out empty and hope for the best. No, we're, we're to minister in the overflow of our own healing. And my heart is, and I know your heart is, post-pandemic, as I believe so many will come, so many that were broken like we were broken and are broken and learning to be healed are going to come, and in the overflow of our growing lives, your growing life and my growing life, we will have something to give another person. Now, most of the work in the days to come of growing in these four areas is going to happen in group. As we gather in groups at Harvest, and we've always felt that's important, it continues to be super important. As we gather in group, this is where it'll be lived out and talked about and, and examined. And we'll continue uh, this, these concepts with our small group leaders to make sure they're equipped to be all that they can be. And as you be, maybe you're not a small group leader today, but you'd say, how could I become a small group leader? And, and there's training available for that. You'll hear about it in the days to come. But even if we're doing, for example, starting in July, we'll do our summer book series like we did last year. And our first book I'm excited about is Andy Stanley's uh, book called Better Decision, Few Regrets. And uh, it's just a, a great, a great template to learn how to make good decisions in our life. 
Well, even if we're doing a book study in group, what will be exposed in our hearts as we look at ourselves is that all of us can grow in one of the four grow areas. And so it doesn't matter. The content of group isn't as important as being in group and learning how to continue growing in one of the four grow areas of connection, boundaries, processing pain, and adulting and growing up. Those four, you'll nev- you can never get away from those four growth areas. So we're going to go deeper uh, in those topics with our small group leaders. They can be equipped, and we as a church will continue uh, to, to kind of uh, continue in understanding that if you're facing symptoms today of depression or anxiety or despair, other emotional issues that are just so difficult at, at times, life is just hard, the brokenness and the pain of our lives, that those are symptoms. You can treat symptoms, but the root issues don't go away. And so we've learned about digging down around the roots and being able to ask the question, what's going on in my life at a root issue that's causing the symptom of pain that I'm experiencing in my life. Now, for most of us, uh, what's happened during this series is I've told a story or I've presented truth in a way that you've had an aha moment. Oh, wow, okay, I get that. Oh, my goodness, yes. Whether it was about connection, whether it was about boundaries, whether it was about processing pain, or whether it was about adulting and growing up and being an adult. So many of you have texted in and said, I've got, I had an aha moment. I get it. Well, actually, the aha moment's not enough. And so what today is about is taking your aha moment a step further, putting some tools in your tool belt, and being able to use them because the aha moment's not enough. The aha moment was light in your life. We call it revelation. It was revelatory. It shone a light in your life. Now, I want you to take that light and shine it down on the other areas of the root system. And in the days to come, it's not a one and done, but in the days and the months to come, to apply it and be intentional about the growth areas of your life, not being worried about it, not performing, we know that, not under judgment, but just as we naturally grow in our lives with Christ, in one of these four areas, God's going to be tapping you on the shoulder and saying, let's get some healing down to some of these root issues. Let's get some of the ingredients down to the root issues that I'm dealing with. Now, as we do that, as we do that, as we take this deeper, not in a series and not even specifically in group, but in your lives moving forward and at harvest as we'll be using this language in the days, the months, and the years ahead. Of We talk about uh, connection, boundaries. We talk about processing pain and adulting. I want to help you, give you some wisdom today as you do that. All right? So I'm going to give you a few points here of, to help you as you take the light of your aha moments of the series and go a little bit deeper. Number one, You're going to have to change, we all have to change, uh, a statement in our life, I deserve, needs to be changed to I am responsible. I deserve to I'm responsible. Let me explain. If you're a parent of a (laughs) 10-year-old, you've been asked, uh, your kids asked you for a phone, a smartphone, a smart device, and I know that because statistically, that is the average age that people are getting smartphones today, 10 years old. <laughs> and actually, 25% of kids under six have a smartphone. It is crazy. And, uh, uh, you know, it was kind of a luxury, and now it's kind of a, a must-have. And, uh, and so that's the age. And so kids are growing up seeing things uh, being given to them, and there is a, I deserve a smartphone. The 10-year-old has this concept, I deserve a smartphone. In fact, I had a conversation recently in my house, uh, and I won't tell you uh, who it was, uh, and there's only two of my kids living at home, and you might be able to figure it out. And uh, one of my sons said to me, no, you, <laughs> you have to supply that as a parent. And we were talking about something that, uh, that they wanted. And I go, what are you talking about? Every parent and you can fill in the blank of whatever it is your kid might ask for. And I'm talking today, changing I deserve to I'm responsible for. And he said, every parent is responsible to give their kids blank. And it was outside of clothes and food. 
and a warm bed. I said, dude, listen, I'll tell you what I'm responsible for, <laughs> to give you food and to give you a warm bed and some clothes. And when you're old enough and you're adulting, you're going to have to figure out how to get those things for yourself. And hopefully I've taught you how to do that. <laughs> fill in the blank. We all have a blank. I deserve a good marriage. I deserve a good job. I deserve great kids. I deserve to be happy. Boy, I've heard that one uh, from people uh, that have come to, you know, as we talk out and process some stuff. I deserve to be happy. No, we need to change it to I'm responsible for a great job. I'm responsible to have a good marriage. I'm responsible to raise great kids. You see, like the 10-year-old, we've got to switch our understanding that we're in the driver's seat of our life. And you can all day long say, I, I deserve a good marriage and wait for your spouse to change. It's not going to happen. But what if you said, I deserve a great marriage, and you began to do the work of growing in one of these four areas and gave the gift to your spouse of a growing version of you, a healed version of yourself, this greatest gift you could give. I deserve a good marriage. No, you're responsible to be the contributor to a good marriage. You're responsible to be a grow in your job place. You're responsible. And God wants you to grow and have the things that you want, but change today. Make a decision. I change it from I deserve to I'm responsible. Number two, do the hard things first. <laughs> I love having my grandkids over. I had one of my grandsons over this week for a sleepover. And, and uh, man, it doesn't change from my kids to my grandkids. When you sit down to eat, uh, they look at the food. Uh, it's good for them, but they know dessert is coming. It happened to be my grandson, Brooksy's, uh, his name is Brooks, but I call him Brooksy. It was Brooksy's uh, fifth birthday, and there was birthday cake, and uh, he saw it before we started. He wanted birthday cake. He wanted ice cream. And I said, dude, I know it's your birthday, but you got to eat your supper first. <laughs> first. Eat the hard things first, and you can have the dessert. It's a great principle. We teach our kids, and we all want to eat the ice cream. We all want to eat what's easy to eat, what tastes good to eat, what's easier to do. But I want to challenge you as you've had the aha moments in these six weeks at, and the revelatory light of your life and the aha moment. Here's an area I can work on. Here's an area I know that God's working in. It's easy to eat the ice cream. Don't eat the ice cream first. Do the things God has shown you. Work on the hard things first. Tackle those first. There will be lots of ice cream to eat later. Number three, remembering good time and bad time. This is going to be super important in the days ahead. Remember that bad time is just repeating the pain of trying, 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 doing it under judgment, knowing that there is a gap, knowing what ought to be but what isn't, and just expelling all kinds of energy but not getting anywhere and still having the symptoms of the pain of life. That's bad time. Good time is still in the responsibility of our lives moving forward and working on connection, working on boundaries, working on uh, processing pain and working on adulting. There's still, it, it's, it kind of, no, it's not kind of. I'm going to be honest. It can be painful to get down in your roots. It can be painful to see what's really there, to see what came missing from the factory, but not having shame or judgment about that and just saying, Lord, I, I, I receive what you have, either from you or from others. And so you're going to learn the difference between symptom pain and the pain of digging around your roots. It feels the same, but the outcome is different, and you're going to learn to discern that. And when you're feeling like I'm not moving forward, I'm just in pain still, someone will be there to encourage you, and the Holy Spirit will be there to encourage you. It's like going to the dentist for a toothache, <laughs> and the dentist says you've been eating too much ice cream and dessert, <laughs> and, uh, and so you have a cavity, and I'm going to have to work on the cavity. And so the dentist tells you, in fact, it's so bad we're going to do a root canal. Sorry for the pun. <laughs> we're going to work on the root of the tooth. We're going to do a root canal. And so there's temporary pain, but for a lifetime later of not having pain in that tooth, you didn't deal with the symptoms, you dealt with the root. 
And so I want to encourage you. You will re- remember there is good time and bad time. Good time. Good time is there's still pain temporarily so that you can have growth in an area. Number four, find people for your well. Find people for your well. You cannot do this alone. You weren't designed to do it alone. Resist the temptation to do this alone. Remember, the first thing that was restored is our connection with God. The sins we've committed have kept us from having a relationship with God. When we understand that and ask Jesus to come into our life, we call it being born again. What Jesus did on the cross is he took your sin so you wouldn't have to pay the penalty for that. And God is saying there is a way of relationship, wide open, wide open access to have a relationship to really know, not know about God, but know him personally through his son Jesus. In fact, in a very few moments, just in a couple, like, like literally moments from now, I'm going to ask if you're watching today and you've never done that, invited Jesus in to your life, I'm going to invite you to do that. We're going to pray a short prayer with you of invitation. Connection with God. And then connection with others. And it, 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 we need both. The cross was both vertical and horizontal. And God's designed it. And to find people for your well. And if you haven't been watching this series, you won't understand this point. I gave a story about uh, being down in the well, a father with, her, with his daughter. And you could go back and find that. But those of you that are, are connecting with the series today on that illustration at this point, it isn't. It isn't that they just show up in your well. Not everybody in your life is necessarily that person that is going to be the people that you build with. Henry's got a great, Henry Cloud's got a great book called Safe People. And you may have to, that might be an area, your connection area might be an area you're going to be doing work on. Who's safe for you? It doesn't mean that person isn't a safe person, but it may not be a safe person for you because they have a super strong personality and tend to adult you and parent you, and you're not going to be able to grow up underneath that. And so you may have to find some people in your well that can just listen and be there for you. One of the most important things I did five years ago, five years ago this summer, I went through this material, and I've shared that candidly with you because I was super stuck in my life. And this material has been a blessing. It's helped me grow. And that's the other reason that I'm saying as a, we're all doing this as a church. And I just want to say thank you that you went through this material. And I, I just think it's going to be so incredible for all of us. But one of the most important things I did was took some time to find out who was in my well. Not, not looking around in my well, but this is intentional relationship building where you begin to reach out to others. It's not necessarily those that are reaching out to you, but you begin to open your life and reach out to others and see who you connect with. Ephesians 2, 20, 22 says, and Christine, if you could come and join me, we're going to end our service today. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. He's talking about a local church. And we believe that local churches don't just happen. Sometimes, um, you know, someone will say to me, can you tell me about XYZ Church? And I'll say, find out how it was started. You know, if somebody just started a church and they're not connected, they're not connected anywhere, they're just kind of a lone ranger, I question the foundation of how strong that church will be, was it established with apostles and prophets? And and that's kind of the context here in Ephesians as Paul is teaching. And then he says, if you've got a great church established on a good foundation, a safe church, that is, a good foundational beginning to a church, he says, now he's using you. He uses you a lot. (laughs) You're awesome. Now he's using you. Fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds it all together. We're not a bowling club. We are the church. We are his body. But it's using this analogy of bricks, mortar, and stone. We see it taking shape day after day. A holy temple built by God. So God is the one who's behind all this. We participate with him. We're like stones and bricks. And if we're a temple, that means his Holy Spirit comes and lives in this temple built by God. All of us built into it a temple in which God is quite at home. My heart, my desire, 
Chris's heart and her desire, our heart together as we pastor this church, is God will be at home more than ever here at Harvest. His presence will be felt more than ever here at Harvest. How does that happen? We're all bricks in a wall. Now, you've got to get this analogy. Imagine in your mind right now a brick wall. And in that brick wall, just focus in your imagination on one brick. That's you. And if you've been added to Harvest recently, or you've uh, been here for years, you were placed, some were placed on the foundation of this church. Some have been placed as years have gone by. And there is somebody underneath you holding you up. Somebody served you. Somebody shared Christ with you. Somebody I was a greeter in a service that that was your morning, that that smile did something on the inside of you that made you feel safe in the house of God. Somebody helped you know that you could belong at Harvest before you believed. Somebody was your small group leader. Whatever it was, somebody held you up. And those are important relationships. And then there were relationships side by side in a wall. And there are people that you just kind of learn how, maybe it's in group or a friend or somebody you went out to lunch with, and you're growing together. We're in this together. You were in a seeds class together. Or you're in group together. And here's the greatest thing. Oh, sweetheart, we've seen God just add to harvest over these years and so many coming and people have been added online and people are, I know when we open the doors again, we're going to meet people we've not met in person yet. Right. And God is saying, who's going to hold them up? Who's going to support them so that we have a strong foundation, a strong local church that God is at home in? Harvest, as we've shared in these weeks, my prayer is you'll understand God's desire is we would be a church that heals, a place where His Spirit is. Bricks and mortar, not on the outside, but on the inside. People joined, people uh, in relationship. And my last point today, who are you in relationship with? Who are you connected with? Why not be intentional these weeks and months? Connect your life. Make sure you have all those relationships. And it does, it's not one and done overnight. Realize who's helped you. Why not even send them a text this week and say, thank you that my life was on, placed on your life, so to speak. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here at Harvest. Who are you side by side with? And who are you ready? Or maybe you're already holding somebody up. Encourage them today. Or get ready to hold somebody else up. Hey, honey, you're going to pray for uh, some needs today. And just before you do, if you're here today, and that first connection, you've never been connected to Jesus, where you would say, I know him. I, I, I'm ready to do that. Would you just pray this very short and simple prayer with Christine and I right now? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That you love that me. That you love me. And you died for and me. And you died for me. I receive your I gift. I receive your gift. Of salvation of today. Of salvation today. Come into my life. Come into my life. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. I want to be with you. I want to be with forever you and forever and ever. and ever. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we believe you born again. We are excited. Just text in the box, either in YouTube or send us a message or in Facebook today. We'd love just to send you a greeting and congratulate you for the best decision you've ever made. Yeah, you can also text us at 613-704-7287. So that is just another way to just let us know so we can stand with you and celebrate your new journey that you made the best decision today. We do have some prayer requests. We're looking for... Uh, we're praying for healing from confirmed COVID cases that we know. And just that God will intervene there, yeah. make a way where there seems no other way. But yeah. you know, with Jesus, every way is possible. Pray that their immunity kicks in. Yeah. Pray that it doesn't have link. For some people, it That's lingers right. on and on. Yeah. It'll just stop. Yeah. You can really believe for that. Absolutely. And uh, for a blood clot, dementia, insomnia. Oh, wow. yeah, let's just on. press in for these Jesus. this morning. God, we just thank you, God, thank that you, you are bigger, God, than the name of COVID. God, yes. you are stronger than the name of COVID. God, you can move mountains. COVID is nothing, God, compared to, God, your your love. Your, you can move anything at any time, Father. And we're just praying for confirmed COVID Jesus. cases, God, that you will intervene. God, you are the ultimate physician. God, you are the almighty healer, Father. And we just stand against COVID-19, God, this morning, attacking, Father, taking over bodies. Father, I just break Jesus. off this morning the name COVID over yes. those we love, God. Yes. The name COVID over those, God, that are 
trying to take over, Father. Yes. It has no place, God, right. in, in the ones we love. God, in everyone, God, we're praying for people, God, and those that have been afflicted by this horrible thing, COVID. But, God, you can intervene at any time, Jesus, Thank and we're you, praying Lord. for healing. healing. God, for insomnia, yeah, for dementia, God, come. for mental health, Clarity God, for all Jesus of these name. things, God, that you will just intervene this yes, morning, Lord. God. In this time where nothing is easy, God, that you can just reach in and just bring clarity to minds. Bring sleep to those that are deprived, God. We are just asking you, God, for a miracle, Father, in these situations, God, in these places, God, where the enemy is trying to attack and we're just coming against this morning. Jesus. God, we're just praying for guidance, God, this morning. Yes, Lord. Father, that you will give great guidance, God, where, where step, we need clarity, God, where we feet. need just you to go ahead, God, and make a way where there seems no other way. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you these times, God, where it seems tough, but Jesus, you are still there. You are still present. God, you are still the Almighty. And Father, we just ask you this morning to just yes. be where those places, be in those lives, yes, be in Lord. those situations, yes, be in those marriages, God. Be in that financial Come situation, on. God, that you will just intervene and bring, God, just peace to the storm. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just before we conclude, I know you got a couple of things you have to cover. This week in group, there is a downloadable, it's called an inventory, past, um, present, and future. And so to kind of, this, this inventory is to help you in the months and days ahead, but you're going to process some of it in group this week. And if you're not in group, go ahead and download it and do this on your own. Um, but it's an inventory is just that, uh, like a sh storekeeper that'll go in, what did we have, what do I have, and what do I need? Um, and so it's just uh, some questions in each of the four growth areas. It will take you some time to do this. So I'm just giving you a heads up before group this week, and your group leaders will uh, appreciate this. And the work this week is really to begin identifying some goals. And that's what I would like you to just talk about in group, not necessarily the inventory at all, but what did the inventory questions, which you're going to download, how did they help you set some goals, some growth areas, and whether it's connection, you know, so um, in a marriage, and we do this sometimes, we set a goal, let's work on this goal, and uh, and for you to do that. So just a heads up uh, for the homework this week, and that is available, you'll see it um, either on our Facebook page or wherever information is made available for you to download the inventory, past, present, and future. Absolutely. Uh, the lockdown extension, I think we're all aware that it has been extended. I'm so aware. we will not be coming into our <laughs> building. But I think what one thing we're, we've learned through this whole thing is we'll never take each other for granted. I again. know. I hope we don't. I think. Right? You I learn, hope we don't. Exactly. Just learn to forgive. And the little things that we make into big mountains and they're not really all that important in the bigger picture of life. But I think we'll hug more and just, you know, forgive will we, easier. Will we hug more? <laughs> Well, I like, I like hugging. Uh, yes, you do like hugging. <laughs> Where do I go from there? Don't. Um, don't forget our new time change next week at 9.15. 9.15. So um, you're going to have to get up a little earlier, but that's okay. Because or get up the later sun is watch shining. It, watch it on demand, but that's not as yeah. fun as being together and doing it. We had it. Brooks for a sleepover this week, and it was 6 o'clock when he was kissing up my arm. And I said, what are you doing? He said, Nan, the sun's up. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, but Nan's not up yet. So, <laughs> But you know what? We all need to be challenged to get up a little earlier. Yeah. And um, just this is such an important time, even though we're not here, yeah. um, meeting with yeah. the Neglect, body. No, the scripture says, yeah. don't, don't put it exactly. off. Make sure you get together. And it said it for a reason. We need each other. That's right. We do. We need each other. We just need to know that we need each other, and we're going to be together soon. Harvest, we love you. Uh, we think of you often. Uh, we pray for you often. We see your faces and our sleep, and we're like, we cannot wait. Can't wait. Chelsea messaged me last night and said, um, how are you doing? And I said, I miss people. 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 I just want to see everybody, and um, I can't wait till that day is coming, and we can all be together again. God bless you bless all. You, Have a great Love week. You so much. Enjoy the sunshine today and just be blessed and know that we are praying for you, yeah. but standing with you, and we love you. Love you so much. Be blessed, Harvest. Bye-bye.
Well, thank you so much for joining our service today. It has been a pleasure to have you with us. Mm -hmm. And if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we are absolutely pumped. You have made the best decision you could ever make in your entire life. And hey, we'd love to get a Bible to you and just give you some resources to start you on this journey. And actually, because of the lockdown, things are a bit more complicated, but we literally will put a Bible aside so that when we're back in person, you can pick it up. It's gonna have your name on it. It's gonna be ready for you. So if you prayed that prayer, just send us an email at info at hcfcornwall.ca or text us, the number's on the screen right now. We would absolutely just love to celebrate with you and get you connected and get you everything you need for this incredible journey. Yeah, and like we've been doing Churches That Heal now for a few weeks yep. and uh, it's not just on Sunday. We get to enjoy it midweek That's and right. we get to be doing this uh, during small group. And yeah. so there's a participants guide yep. and so it's going to help us process some of the stuff, the guck of our life and we're going to, we're <laughs> you know, like... Let's I, go, let's yeah, do I've it. Yeah, I've been just seeing those like, uh, those advertisements to get your ducks clean recently <laughs> yes. and it was like, one was like, oh, you can get your ducks clean for $99. It doesn't cost you to get your ducks clean of your life for this right yep, we just right. need to put in the work uh, so I encourage you put in the work get in on that participants guide yeah uh, and then enjoy small group because it's gonna be really yeah. good um, and yeah I'm excited uh, I'm participating in a small group this semester and it's just gonna be amazing I, I mean it's been amazing it's been amazing yeah. it's been a few weeks now yeah so <laughs> yes. awesome <laughs> I just picture actual ducks. What do you say? Get your ducks clean. <laughs> well, That's you know, what I think of. Yeah. Anyway, we love you, Harvest. Have an amazing week. Be blessed. Have a cup of coffee or a mug with water in it because that's what we have. Yeah. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Clink. Go be friendly. Yeah. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I'm chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say.